Hey, welcome back to my channel. Um, my name is Athena. Um, if you haven't already, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. Um, today I wanted to talk about PCOS and a couple other issues that I have, um, such as infertility, keratoconus, and Hashimoto's. <laughs> I am a like all in one <laughs> when it comes to these medical like conditions and issues that just seem to plague my life. But I also wanted to cover this because I know there are a lot of women, plus size women, but women in general that also um, might be dealing with the same thing. I just want you to know that you are not alone and these are just my experiences and how I found out about them. What I want to talk about was PCOS. Um, I've had PCOS, I'm sure, 10 plus years, probably even back um, further. They usually say when you get like in your 30s or I don't know, maybe it's like a little after you um, go through puberty or something along those lines. Um, I think I probably had it since I was like 12, 13, 14 around that time. Um, I think it was like 2006 or 2007. Um, I had been with my boyfriend who is now my husband, um, but we had, were dating and we had been together for about a good year, I think by that point, and decided we wanted to try for kids. Um, I had never been successful as um, getting pregnant with you know anyone or anything like that, so I kind of knew there was something wrong with me along those lines. The doctors and they right away told me that um, I would have to go see actual like OBGYN, um, one of those kind of doctors, um, to get the actual Clomid. But the lady at the time um, that saw me, I think she was a nurse practitioner, um, had basically said though she goes, but I think part of your problem is that you have PCOS. Um, PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Big word to just basically say many cysts. Um, sounds scary. A lot of women have this issue and probably will never be diagnosed with it and will not even know that that's what they are dealing with. Um, but along with having PCOS um, with, you know, the some of the, I think the symptoms were like um, being overweight, you know, ex carrying excess weight, carrying excess weight here, um, being fatigued all the time. Um, if you look it up, I'm sure you can find a whole sheet list of everything that might suggest you have PCOS. I remember it being really generalized and really vague and was just kind of like, oh my god, I have this. I kind of was startled because I hadn't been to like a women's doctor in like since I was like a teenager and even when I had PCOS I freaked out I remember just being like feeling really sad about it and was like oh my god this explains everything you know this is you know I'm just basically doomed I'm not <laughs> it's just one of those things um, I ended up going to a, um, like a specialist or a doctor that was able to say yes you do have PCOS um, but you know we, we can see what we can kind of do for you but I also want to say that this doctor that I saw was very very rude um, I hadn't been to a doctor let alone a women's doctor in a long time and had a pap smear in a long time and so and also being a heavier set big woman you're already uncomfortable I'm you know very self-conscious it is a very vulnerable feeling and you know, to undress in front of someone that you do not know whether it is a doctor or not um, it did it make it any easier so needless to say that when I went to go to this visit I was already having issues with being with feeling bad because I haven't been able to get pregnant on my own um, second I knew they were gonna address to my weight and I was already feeling really bad about myself because I was even heavier than I am now and it was just you know a bad thing to feel have that feeling already walking in and thirdly because I had to meet with a men doc or a man doctor um, at the time I you know I look at it I just kind of was like okay I just need to see what's going on but um, it was very uncomfortable to begin with for me throughout the whole thing so I show up at this doctor's office you know I'm trying to be really nice and smile and trying to like pep myself up to see him and you know worst case scenario is like yeah you gotta lose all this weight or something like I had kind of already in my mind told myself what was gonna probably go on I just remember sitting there telling him what I was looking to do and that you know I had fertility issues I was told I had PCOS you know what are my options are you willing to help me and I remember him looking me up and down and just looking me dead in the eye and basically telling me that if he goes if he, unless he goes unless you lose weight find Jesus 
or stop eating, which I doubt you'll do either of those, you need to have weight loss surgery. I remember wanting to punch this doctor in his face and then I remember the feeling of being like ashamed and just like degraded and had to then <laughs> go into the exam room um, and the reason why I'm telling this story because it also has to do with my PCOS um, going to the exam room and being just already upset <laughs> and like hating this guy but was like okay well let's see what's going on so he's going to give me an ultrasound to you know kind of figure out what's going on with me because I'm um, at the time too I had a really huge belly that felt hard it felt like as if I was carrying something I mean I looked like I was physically pregnant and it felt hard to the touch and my belly was like very rounded um so when I went and we you know got me in the exam room <laughs> I just remember too <laughs> having to go on the you know the table that you lay on and it almost tipping over like literally because I don't know my weight the way I got on it it, it was just bad I remember thinking like you know okay the, like this is the most embarrassing you know thing ever and the most just discouraging and like worst fat moment possible if you know what I mean like like Jesus really I am now gonna break this table he's right you know needless to say he did the ultrasound and it ended up turning out I had a cyst and I'm not talking a little cyst I'm talking 70 it was in between 60 to 70 pounds of fluid that was encased in a sack that was basically a cyst that had been developing for many many years not only did I find out I had a cyst and a serious problem that possibly and really could have killed me was the other fact that even when he found this he was still trying to get me to go to a different doctor as if like he was disgusted by the fact that he would have to operate on me or he would have to see me or that's how I felt at the time and I still kind of feel that way now I went and got the surgery done he ended up being the doctor who did it he found out once he found out what the problem was and that it wasn't just maybe I wasn't just so heavy because I was just a lazy fat person as how I want to say he probably generalized it um, his attitude then changed towards me and he was a lot nicer um, he was more concerned you know he realized hey you know you know kind of maybe like my bad still doesn't make me feel any better but I just look at it as like you know what he was kind of a ass for <laughs> basically being kind of mean to me and kind of generalizing stuff um, but this big cyst too is part of the reason why I have my infertilities as well um, I guess when it was in there it had done some damage to my left side of my ovary so I have like a partial part of my left ovary I really have only have one functioning side which is my right side and um, I didn't think the fallopian tube on my left side was actually like it's either really small at the end like I'm talking like really skinny because they also did one of those like can't they think of the name of it but it's like a subpenogram something where they put the dye and they let it go through so they can see if your tubes are open if there's any blockages and it only went so far on my left side and just completely stopped and it was just like real I remember looking on the screen it was real tiny real thin but my right side luckily worked fine and was functioning so at least I have that but um, this is a struggle that I had with my um, PCOS and what I feel I actually really do fall under PCOS and it's one of those things that I'm sure doesn't happen all the time but yes I had a 60 to 70 pound cyst that I was carrying for years um, and also part of it is because I thought I was just extra heavy this is where I'm carrying my weight and unfortunately never got it, it looked any further into so I am glad we decided that hey we want to try to have kids but I at least found out something else because if I would have just kept letting it go and wouldn't have gotten the surgery for it um, I do really do not know what would have happened because that was all fluid that was basically did not need to be in there and it was causing um, severe issues I was I'm already heavy and I get kind of puffy and bloated anyways just naturally 
naturally, but I looked really puffed out. I it was poor circulation. It was also affecting my health itself. So that's just one of the things that I have been dealing with, um, even in my weight loss journey, and I will probably continue dealing with for the rest of my life. Um, another issue that I'm, it's kind of a touchy subject for me, is infertility. Um, I cannot just seem to get pregnant on my own, and I wonder that I see now is I love her to death, um, and she'll tell me point blank, you know, you need to lose more weight, you need to do this, but she's never made me feel like to be, you know, ashamed or like I should be offended. She's actually trying to help me. Unfortunately, um, we were trying for about three months um, with Clomid. Um, I, I think I went from 50 milligrams to 100. They were able to make me start, um, what I say, I want to say not ovulate, but like form the little eggs that you're going to have. They just, I never think they never release, which means I don't think I technically still, ov I still ovulate. So we're still kind of playing with that stuff. Um, three months of trying and it was a very hard thing to deal with because you're getting the constant, you know, maybe this month, maybe this and then nothing happens. Or, you know, you're having to take the test or you, on those pills, you feel like you're pregnant. You feel the symptoms of everything a pregnant woman would probably go through only in the end to turn around and be kind of, you know, empty handed. It's a very touchy subject for me because it's something that I've been battling with for a long time. And unfortunately, because of the place where I live at, the state, and it's a very family-oriented place. It is very hard <laughs> to be out in public and be asked by people, you know, oh, how old are you? Oh, you guys are married. You know, where are your kids at? And it's a very touchy subject because I feel like even though my husband tells me, you know, it doesn't matter. It'll happen when it happens. I'm gone crying about I'm like it's still kind of makes you know your value as a woman kind of feel like it's down so not only with medical issues along with being told you know you, you you might not be able to have kids or let's try to figure it out but sometimes it also comes into play you don't have the money to do like the in vitro you don't have the means to you know to maybe later on in life go adopt you know a kid or along those lines so it's always been a struggle with me because a lot of people in my family have kids a lot of people that I come across have kids even people that are, say oh I have PCOS don't worry about it I got pregnant um you know I had some of your medical issues don't worry about it. I got pregnant it still doesn't take you know any of the burden or you know bad feelings about it um, away so that's also something that I've been dealing with so there's times where I feel like I'm in a like a constant mood swing there's like I, I'm up when I'm up and then I'm down when I'm down and the reason why I bring this to light because there's a lot of women who <laughs> have my issue and it, sometimes I think we get told that we shouldn't feel bad or that we shouldn't, you know, well, I, you know, like, are people like, I guess, shouldn't feel bad or not, you know, want to be around certain people because of it or, you know, or you also shouldn't, you know, feel basically like how I should feel. Um, I want you to know you, sh you can. You should be able to feel disappointed. You should be able to feel all of those. You should be able to feel anger and not have people you know, tell you that you can't feel that or don't worry about it or, oh, well, maybe, you know, God just didn't intend it for you. Sometimes that's a very generalized thing that I get told and as much as I want to believe that, there's just sometimes, you know, that's not a very comforting thought at times. You suffer from infertility, just know, you know, you feel how you want to feel and if someone has anything to say about it, you know, tell them go screw themselves basically because you are allowed to feel how you want to feel and um, another thing that I am dealing with is something called keratoconus <laughs> so on a different subject so I can stop being teary-eyed um, keratoconus is basically the steepening of your cornea 
So my cornea in my eye, <laughs> the little reflective part that, you know, covers like this, this little clear piece, <laughs> is um, basically it's thinning out. I think it was like 2007, 2008. I don't really remember. It was not, it was like a few years back. I had found, I went to the um, eye doctor, regular eye doctor, and they couldn't get any of the um, machines to dilate my eyes or like get the picture. You know, they put, put your head in the thing, you look down, and they couldn't get it to register on any of their machines. They're like, thought it was something kind of weird, but they're like, you know what, we're going to send you to a specialist. There's something going on. And I remember the doctor, one of the doctors, the last time I had seen him was like, because I was, before that, I was just getting regular glass, you know, glass prescriptions, and I was told, you know, oh, you got astigmatism in both eyes, but other than that, and then on my last visit, I remember the doctor going, come back to me in about six months, he goes, but it looks like you might have a touch of keratoconus, didn't elaborate on it, didn't really say too much, just kind of like, okay, it's something that, you know, we'll check on that time, I think an actual year had gone by, and then that's when I went back, and was like, you know, my glass prescription wasn't working, he did mention something, and I think it was around that time anyways, because about once a year, it seemed like I had to go and get my eyes re-examined anyways, so I went, and that's when they were like, no, you need to see a specialist, our machines aren't working, or they're not capturing the picture we needed to capture, so I go to a um, specialist, another specialist, and they tell me, um, with all their machines and even that was hard because their machines were almost doing the same thing that I had keratoconus and I remember him bringing up the picture on the screen on his computer to show like where my eyes were it showed like a picture two pictures of my eyes right and left and I remember the left one it had it was like color coded had like big red spot literally like right in the middle of it and I remember just looking like oh god what is that you know like well, what do these colors mean and he was like okay hey, you see this spot right here and he's like basically that's where the keratoconus is that's where the you know the most progressed form of it is right now was literally in the center of my eye so almost like where my pupil is <laughs> like right in the middle there he was like it basically he's like it's thinned out a lot like it's progressed a lot and so I'm thinking within a year that I had seen this other doctor was like oh you got a touch of keratoconus and then I go see the specialist and he's like no you have a serious form of it Usually people can get this treated, you know, it's not a big deal, you do have to get corneal transplants, stuff like that, but mine was progressed so much that I'm actually losing vision in my left eye. This was one of those moments too where I walk away from the doctor, I remember being like wanting to cry, wanting to be like angry, and then I just remember, I think I was mostly just in shock at first because no one wants to be told like, hey, you're losing your vision, and not only that, but in that same appointment, he also said that I also showed signs of terror, of sorry, keratoconus in my right eye. So I'm like, great, I'm like, not only is it progress severely in my left eye and I'm already losing vision in it but my right eye I had visions of being you know legally blind or worse you know within the next few years it was a very hard time I don't have the money to go okay well I'll just go get this fixed or I can just go do you know and then you don't have eye transplants like so it is what it is um, luckily I had a relative a while back who stepped up on their own and actually paid for me to get, I think it was called cross-linking, um, to go to my right eye to be able to save the cornea as it is. Um, unfortunately, in my left eye, I do need a corneal transplant. I have yet been able to get that done. Um, my vision, though, will never come back in my left eye. Basically, I, it, it is what it is. I just know for the safety of the public, I do not drive at nighttime, but eventually it's probably going to get put on my driver's license that I am not going to be able to drive at some point. PCOS, infertility issues, keratoconus, I'm just like... You know, give me a break. I'm not doing this video though to be like, oh, feel sorry for me. Oh, poor me. I'm just to show that, you know, things happen in life. You don't have control over them. And that sometimes in life you don't have control over everything or over every aspect of your life. And you have to at a certain point just kind of be okay with that. Another thing that I have that I've talked about on here is Hashimoto's. Um, 
it's basically just a thyroid problem for a lot of people I think it's like I said before it's like when their thyroid is over like overactive or it's underactive um, mine has to do with when the chemical gets released once my um, thyroid is doing what it's supposed to be doing and a chemical is released um, my antibodies are attacking that chemical unfortunately and so sometimes I have a severe reaction and I will break out into hives um, I, my lip swelled up, my chin swelled up one day, which was the worst reaction I've ever had. And they actually had to give me like an EpiPen to carry around just, you know, for future, or sorry, future use. And um, I also had to have a prednisone, to, or take some prednisone to get the swelling to go down. Um, but luckily with that, I went to the doctor, I think it was last Wednesday, and um, they did my thyroid and checked all that. And all my hormone levels with that are actually fine. So right now my... Um, if you want to say my thyroid, my Hashimoto's, anything that's going on with that has actually been okay. Um, I, your girl is struggling with because there are some days where I'm like, is it allergies? Am I swelling up? You know, like what's going on? I'm like, it is just like a million and one different things. Um, but you'd have to look up Hashimoto's. I was told though too, it's another thing, kind of like PCOS, Hashimoto's. A lot of people have it, don't know they have it, will never be diagnosed. They're not going to probably die from it if it's not like a very a very serious case or anything like that so it's just one of those things um so you know even though a doctor said oh this is what you have it could technically go away so it's one of those things where it's like I always just look at it as like is it really that or are they just you know it's just it's a real generalized category of stuff when certain things go wrong they're like oh you can fit under this you can fit under this but that's what I told I was told that I had that I have Hashimoto's but right now it is under control um, my previous doctor did say that eventually I will have to go on hormones for um, this but I'm not going on them now I do not need them now but along with my PCOS my infertility and my Hashimoto's um, I do know that I all um, and because when I was doing the infertility stuff found out that I do make a lot of the male hormone and not enough of the estrogen so that's kind of my battle there my body is just very I guess out of whack hormone wise and it probably has been for since I told you like since I was like a young teenager and just never had any of these health issues addressed until I got older and was like you know I need to I, mean, I need to do some adulting and go do this stuff but I'm gonna go to cut this short now <laughs> if that can even be considered I'm just wanted to put that out there and let you know kind of what's going on with me let you know a little bit more about me but some of the things that I have been dealing with uh, along with my weight loss journey stuff um, that I just felt like I wanted to share. Um, if you haven't already, please um, subscribe, like, and share. I do appreciate it. And if you have any of these kind of medical issues or anything like that going on, comment down below. Just let me know how you're dealing with them or if you know of something that maybe I don't. I'm always interested in that kind of stuff. But until next time, thanks for watching.